the book that we're going to explore. I'm going to go further than just the core book. We want to explore the world around it as well. Um, it is by uh, Christian Clausen, and it is Five Lines of Code. You know, I'm, go- I'm going to say, you know, books with hard-coded numbers in their title are something that I'm familiar with, as the editor of 97 Things Every Program Should Know and 97 Things Every Java Program Should Know. So during university, I got more and more into this programming thing and how can we make code easier to work with? Is there like such a thing as perfect code that never breaks and never like that's that's so resilient to change? And so I started trying to, uh, you know, fake it till you make it kind of dress for the job you want. So I was like, here's a rule. It's super easy to understand. Just do this. It'll be better than before. It might not be perfect, but we'll go in the right direction. You know, eventually I had this catalog of, of small rules that sort of helped each other and built on each other. And, and I knew that it was it was something really important or really useful because the improvements we saw, saw were, were real. And so I decided to write them down uh, and then compile them into a, a small catalog of 100 pages in the beginning. This idea that instead of trying to figure out everything from the start, you instead do this small incremental work uh, on the code base and you start from a mess. And I'm like, obviously that's way more applicable because I always have a mess. Whether I start from something somebody else built or something I built six months ago, it's always a mess. Your book actually gives people the raw recipes and low-level ingredients. Just saying, don't worry about the tools. I'm going to, I'm going to show you what this is. Just imagine the only tool you have it is a compiler. Now I like that approach. It's always been about sort of the purity of like what's the least amount of things I need to learn to be able to work effectively. Tools can help you fast, but they can also break things very fast. Code is trying to model some part of reality in a language that both the computer can understand and the humans can work with. We have to take it down to the lowest common denominator of computer and human. Perhaps in software development, we've become very good at erecting barriers to communication, whereas uh, your book is very much about, no, let's do more of this. It's not simply about the refactoring and touching of the code. It's, It's this idea of, yeah, um, whether it's naming or structuring or articulating what the goal of a piece of code is, that's hard, therefore do it more. A lot of the things, as, uh, as I hope is evident in the book, are about making things more immediately visible. I should be able to look at the code and know that it's wrong or know that it's good uh, without having to think. If I have to use, start up my cognitive processes, I'm not going to do it. I'm especially not going to do it because I'm super busy with the 30 other tasks that are on the backlog that we'll never even get to. To make comments much less common because then perhaps we can get people to actually read the ones that matter and get rid of all the ones that don't. What's the reason that I that functional programmers tend to start by thinking and not by writing code? Refactoring to me is, is a lot like uh, deformatting your computer, right? If you just learn stuff all the time, you put all these little pieces uh, back to back in your head, and then sometimes you invalidate some learning and you forget something, stuff, you know, you create all these holes. Sometimes you need to go in and just collect all, all of it, tie a nice bow around it and be like, okay, this is the current truth. Subscribe to the GoTo YouTube channel now and join the experts in person or online at any upcoming GoTo conference using the promo code BOOKCLUB. Visit gotopia.tech to learn more.